Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator CS6, the latest version as of now, and this video is created in 2012. So the first thing you're going to see when you start it up, it's going to look like this. It's kind of dark looking and whatever else, and this is just the default settings right now, so I'm going to work from there. Uh, let's go ahead and make a new file, so go to File, New, and it'll bring up this dialog box. Um, right now, name, don't worry about that. You can set your name early on if you want. Then it has artboards. Uh, you can set it up so you have multiple like working areas. We're not going to worry about that for now, but uh, just know, like, let's say you want to create two different logos and they want to be in two different spots. You want to print them separately. You could go with two artboards. Um, we're not going to be so concerned with size and width and height. That stuff's not really as important uh, when you're making web graphics. That's what we're focusing on here. So these default settings are just fine. Uh, I prefer to have a landscape orientation. That's up to you. Color mode, uh, default is actually CMYK, which is for printing. Uh, instead, we want to do RGB, which is red, green, blue, and that's for uh, online uh, websites. Anything that's going to be shown through a screen should be on RGB. And then raster effects. Um, for that, let's go with screen. Um, that's the default resolution for screens. If you're going to do print, you'd probably use medium or high. But we're going to go with 72 PPI, points per inch. And then preview mode. Uh, defaults just fine for that okay and they have templates we don't need to be concerned with that so we hit OK and basically gives us this sheet of paper it looks like or, or whatever and uh, we can start creating things in here first one what we want to do though is just get a feel for the layout um, it it's, seems uh, everyone wants to jump right into it but if you understand the layout and just some basics it'll help you in the future so uh, first thing you'll notice is there are tools on the left there's tools on the right, or they appear to be tools, but they're not really. Um, the tools on the left, we'll go through some of these basic ones, um, but first let's look at these tools on the right. If you actually grab the edge so you get your double arrows, you can kind of drag it out and they'll say what they are. Okay. Um, so when you click one of these, like swatches, it brings up swatches. You click it again, it goes away. Or if I click swatches and I click gradient, it goes to that instead. I, I like this. Um, I like it a lot, the way it's set up now. It used to be much different than this in uh, earlier versions that I've used. Um, I am going to say let's, uh, I'm, I'm more familiar and, and you may be as well with older versions, so you can also go to Window, Workspace, and they have all these different uh, setups. Um, I, I personally, I like Web, uh, because that's what I work with mostly, so let's go ahead and choose Web. And again, if you don't like that, go ahead and go to changing it. Um, and let's say, for example, I bring this out here. I just like grab the top of these and just throwing things over the place. And you're like, oh, I don't like that. I want to go back. Here's what you do. You go to Window, Workspace, and let's say I go back to Essentials, and then I go back to Web. You'll see that it's actually still like that. So you can go to Workspace and do Reset Web, and then it'll go back to looking just like that. Okay? All right. Um, a few things. If I if I drag this out, it still shows what these are here. So I'm going to drag it out a little ways. I don't want to totally ruin my workspace here, um, so I'm going to leave it like that. A um, few things. Uh, I guess we'll go through these. Uh, I'm going to draw a simple box first. All right. I'm just going to draw a simple rectangle. So just click, drag, click. All right. If you look at this, um, let's start with transform. This allows you to change the size of whatever is selected. Right now, the, the X and Y is the position on the page. Um, so let's say I just wanted to move it a little bit to the right. Let's say I go 400 instead. It's going to move it over. Now, that's not really a concern right now. If you're going to set this up as a website and you need it to be a precise spot, go ahead and do that. Uh, what is probably more important is the width and height. So I want this actually to actually be exactly 220 because that's the size I know I need on the website. So I type that in. It didn't really change much, did it? I should probably go more so you notice it. Let's say 300. It actually changes the size of that square. All right, um, that's really nice. Instead of having to try to line it up with the ruler, so this is 300 by 200, and I'm just gonna st stick with it. Now, I should mention right here, I just clicked on the selection tool, um, and I want you to know the difference between these two. The selection tool is allows you to grab uh, whole objects. Okay, the uh, direct select is, and, and by the way, use your shortcuts. If I hit V, it automatically goes to um, selection tool. If I go with A, see I just hold my mouse over and it says the shortcut is A, um, I can then grab individual spots. Now, all of it's selected, so if I grab it now, it's going to move all of it. But if I click off it and then back onto the corner, 
you can see I can actually grab the individual corners and move that however I want. Uh, let's say I want it to stay exactly level, but I just want to move it in some. It will snap down to it, or I can hold um, Shift, and it'll... Um, shift's not doing it. Maybe it's Control. Uh, I guess it just snaps. A little different than the old version. And I can just move this in. Let's say I want to go halfway. You can kind of see it stays along that path. And by the way, they're not lines. They're called paths. <laughs> and let's say I want to go halfway. It'll actually snap to halfway, that intersection there. See, 150. So it shows DX 150, meaning the X position is 150, and it was 300 wide. So that would make it right into, the, into halfway. All right, so that's, that's perfectly in a half. Okay, so that's transform tool. I just want to show that, and that's the direct select and direct selects A. So if I want to go to that, I just hit A. I want to go back to selection, I hit V. So it's nice to be able to go back and forth between these two relatively quickly. Um, there's also info. Not really going to need that. And let's say you don't want it. You could drag it out here and then hit this little X, and it's not in there. So this is just the transform tool here. And... Uh, Let's go down farther. There are swatches, so I am going to hit V and select my object. And there are swatches. So basically if I if I choose these, it changes the color of the object. Alright? And they actually do have gradients in here too, so I can like um, hit one of these and that does that, okay? And there are lots of swatches. If there's a swatch in here that you don't have all the colors, right? You can click on color and then just a just change this color a little bit to be exactly what you want. You can use the color picker and go in there and, and, and get the color that you want. That's another way of doing it. Uh, a lot of people just stick with the swatches that are in there and then you, there's so many different ways you can change the color. Like I showed, you can use this or the color picker. You can double click on these fill colors over here or on this or up there. There's always multiple ways. I, I tend to go to this one here. And if you double click it, you can go to the exact color you want. You can change the hue, saturation, and everything else. So let's go with a nice hot pink. Uh, it's my favorite color today. Why not? And uh, or since we're working with web, you can also click only web colors. And I'm going to pick this hot pink. I like that contrast. Look at that. Mm. All right. I'm going to hit OK. And there's my hot pink color. OK. Uh, I do want to show in the swatches. They also have a library of swatches. Uh, you can actually drop this down. Go to open swatch library. And we can choose other ones. So let's say I only want to work with earth tones. If I click that, it brings it out here. And I could say I really like working with you know this, um, this selection of earth tones. So I can just stay in that one and work with those colors. Okay. Uh, if I don't want earth tones, or let's say I do want to keep it, I can actually drag it and put it inside this box. See how it glows? You go, it'll show blue. I can let go and it stays in there. So I can go to swatches. I can go back to earth tones whatever I may want. Okay. Again, if I don't want it, I can bring it in here and hit X, um, or I can make it small or large. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in here. All right, so that's swatches, colors, and opening other swatch libraries. They also have this color guide in here uh, between shades and tints. Uh, right now I have you know these selected. If I, if I select this, I go to color guide. It actually has the different shades and tints of um, these earth tone swatches. I, I just click on the little folder I can go back to color guide and it brings those up. Kind of nice. Um, so then I can just kind of work with this. Um, really useful. I'm going to use it uh, use it sometime later, so just leave it in there. Um, we also, um, let's not worry about these things for now. Let's just keep moving down. We also have symbols. Uh, basically, these are preset objects that are created in Illustrator. You can also make symbols as well. So let's say I want a little splatter. I'm just going to drag it and bring it out here, and there it is. And there's a little splatter. Uh, we're not going to get too much into that right now. I just want you to know that you can create symbols, and you can also just go to the swatch library, or symbol library, I'm sorry. And they also have in there. So here's Grim Vector Pack, and it's got all these splotches in it and whatever else. Um, you can get girly things or kid-like things or, or business things. Like here's some charts. We need to make sure we, we have this thing available or something, okay? So not really useful to us right now. But uh, symbols, great keep them. Uh, it's up to you if you want them though. Then there's brushes. Um, so let's say I uh, draw something. I'm just going to grab this paint tool and I am going to select my color to be, you know, I'm going to select no color. All right, none. That's the fill. Um, this is, I should probably explain this right now. Let's say I have this box selected right here. Right now I have a fill color of this gray and I can switch it to be whatever. I'm going to go back to hot pink and then my stroke is the color that's on the outside. I'm going to change that to black. It already is. 
and I can make it thicker. I just hit this little arrow up here and it changes the thickness of the border. So fill is inside, stroke is outside, and you can change the thickness of it. Okay? What brushes does, 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 whatever, anyways, what brushes can do is change the stroke uh, to a different style. It's not just straight. So let's say I, I'm going to grab my brush again and I'm just going to draw something, just a black line here. And I can then choose, right now it's on basic, and I can change the thickness. Oh, I have to have it selected though, so I'm going to hit V, touch my path here, and it can change the thickness and the shape of it too. Uh, so let's say it's just at one point right now. I'm going to beef it up to four points so you can see it. And right here I have other options. So like if I hit this one, it's more of like a calligraphy uh, stroke to it. So it's got some, I guess, a texture to it, you'd say. And I can make that bigger. All right. And there's lots of other strokes in there. These only show a few of them right here. But I can also choose, um, I can choose other ones. Again, there's a library. I can open li library. And they have things like artistic uh, calligraphy or chalk or pen. They also have grunge brushes vector pack. Ooh, that's fun. So if I select these, you'll see that it looks like there. So again, let's say I, I really like using this grungy look. All right, Then I can take this and plop this into my brushes so it's always there. It's separate. So I can then click between these and go with that. And if I don't want it, again, I can pull it out and I can just close it out. Okay. Um, otherwise, it does load it into here, the ones that you're using. Okay, so that's nice to have as well. Okay, uh, let's look at graphic styles. Um, basically, let's say I create, I'm going to grab another box, and if I hit graphic style and I hit one of these, it puts um, that style into it. I, I guess that's a bad example. It, it can fill it with different types of fills, but graphic style is more than that. So let's say I, I make this bigger so you can see it. And I click on this one right here. It says Dusk. And you can't really see it now, but if I put it over... Oh, I thought it was see-through. I guess not. Um, I could use this on multiple items, and it gives me that same effect. It's not that this thing is just a gradient. It's actually multiple gradients. You'll see it's in the inside and at the top as well. And I can change the size of this thing, and it stays pretty much the same. And, and what's nice is I can... Uh, I believe I can change the color... Yeah, see? It actually gives it a little different fill color to it, but it still uses that blue on top of it. So even though the fill color could be green, it has a green hue to it, but it still has that green, or it still has that blue with it. Or let's go red. See, it's still got that blue tint to it, I guess you'd say. So that's graphic styles. Let's go ahead and keep it in there. Maybe you'll use it, maybe you won't. Um, I'm just going to throw this down here. Okay, so that's those. And then appearance down here at the bottom. Um, I... Basically, if I click this box, it shows me that I have a 12-point stroke and my fill is, is, uh, my fill is uh, pink. I can also put other things in there. Not going to worry about it for now. Basically, there's going to be objects where you have multiple effects on there, and you want to be able to tell what exactly it looks like, what effects are on it. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that alone. There's also layers and artboards down here. Um, I don't think you're going to use artboards that often. Um, it's Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to get rid of it. And layers is here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab this layers thing, and I'm going to put it with the appearance thing. So that way I have them both right here. All right. And uh, I can drop this layers thing down. You can see all of it's on layer one right now. But if I hit this little down arrow, I can actually see multiple layers. So that means I can select these different objects. Um, and we're going to get more into layers layer when we do compound objects. But uh, for now, just realize it's there. And then there's all this other stuff over here. Um, Right now, like if I click on stroke, I can see it actually shows me a 12-point stroke, caps and corners and everything else. Um, so let's drop this down. Wait, cap, no. Where are the borders? Yeah, dash lines. If I click this, for example, it'll actually make it a dash line. Um, I can actually click this. It makes sure the edges have dashes. Um, I'm not too worried about that right now. But if I click it, you can see the corners definitely have a dash. And I can, if I don't want to see this, I can click over there. Um, but let's say, let's not worry about dash lines, but it has all these other different options. You can, you can have, uh, whatever else. Don't really worry about it. I, I don't know if you'll use it that much because you also have the stroke options up here. Then there's gradient. Um, you can have a gradient, uh, let's say I, I choose this. It shows the gradient in the object. I, I like having this. We'll go over that in a different tutorial. And then transparency. Right now it's set at 100. Let's say I set it at 60 and I put this. That's on top of it right now, but if I 
right click on this and do a range send to back. It's actually under it, so you can see how that works. And if let's say I want to undo that, I just hit Control Z a couple times, and it goes back to what I want. Control Z, by the way, is undo, and Control V doesn't work in this. Um, or Control V is paste, but I'm sorry. Control Y in most programs is redo, but in Adobe it's not. Control Y is actually outlines. So that goes outline mode so you can actually see the actual drawing and there's other effects on top of it. Sometimes you just want to see simple lines. So that's what Control Y does. You want to use Control Z to undo and to redo in this program it's Control Shift Z and you can go back to what you had. Okay? So Control Shift Z and Control Z. Okay, um, so that's transparency, not too big a deal. Um, gradient, stroke, transparency, it's all that stuff. If you want to get rid of that again, just hit the little arrow and it goes back over here. We have character paragraphs and open type in here. Uh, let's not worry about those. If you don't want this, you can grab that entire block right there and just exit. You don't even need it. And links, attributes, um, variables. Again, I guess I'm not going to use this as much. So I'm going to go in here and X that as well. And then actions, I'm not a big fan. I don't use it. Maybe you will. I'm just going to get rid of it for now. So really, the only thing that's left in here is a stroke gradient and transparency. So what I can do is I could uh, put it to the right, and it would make a new uh, area here. But I don't want that either. So maybe I could put it up here with everything else. So now I have stroke gradient and transparency right in here. Okay. If I'm not using it, then I could minimize this. Oh, I don't really like how that's set up. I'm going to pull this back out. Oops. Too bad I can't undo, <laughs> right? Um, transform. See, I don't like how it's actually taking up the whole area. So if I click this, color guide, I bring it all back. Uh-oh. Just a sec. Sorry, this is kind of new to me. I kind of screwed it up here. But basically, if you hit these uh, little plus and or these arrows, you can see all of it see just a small portion of it or not see it at all. So I like that I can see all of these. So if I do want to put this in here, okay, I just put it at the top where the blue line is here or in between them. I'm going to try putting it in between them and then it goes in there. If I click one of these to be able to see more of it, it's going to crush all these other ones down, which is fine. I mean the layers and appearance is down here. I don't use that as often, so this is fine. If you find that you're not using one very often, like this transform, I really probably could put that with the rest of these. Okay, and that way I'll be able to see my layers and appearance still. So, I this is the way I like it. Some people would rather just have the simple icons that we saw originally. So let's say I like this. I'm gonna go to workspace then, and do uh, new workspace, and I'm gonna call this one, you know, my name. I'm gonna put Brian, and that's gonna be my workspace. This is the way I like things. That way I can still go if I go to workspace. There's Brian, but I can also go back to to web, for example. And that's the way I left web last time. But if I went to reset web, then it's going to bring all this back. Or if I go to workspace essentials and just have it like that, that's fine too. So um, if you'd rather have it this way, go for it. If you like it this way, that's fine too. Um, but otherwise, I can go back to Brian and have my awesome workspace that I like. So uh, that's basically how you set up your menus. This is some basic stuff I just showed you. Uh, in the next video, I think I'm going to show you how to do some basic um, shapes and how you actually take simple shapes and make something much more complex. So I uh, hope you learned a lot and good luck.